It had been 190 days since Ford Motor Company had announced that it was ending production of the venerable Model T and that a completely new vehicle would be introduced. Ford marked the moment by doing a ceremonial build of the 15 millionth Ford. Contrary to popular belief, this wasn't the last Tin Lizzie built, as Ford still assembled Model Ts for several weeks afterwards. But by mid-June of 1927, Ford assembly plants across the world fell silent. It seemed as if all eyes were focused on the revolutionary car maker that had created the low-priced automobile industry. Between May and late November of 1927, Ford Motor Company did not run any national ads in print, but that didn't stop local Ford dealers from taking matters into their own hands. Many dealers, left without any cars to sell, ran their own local newspaper ads trying to get people to trade in their vehicles on the promise of being first in line to purchase a new Ford. These dealers worked hard to keep the Ford name in print and encouraged eager buyers to wait for the new Ford to come along instead of buying from the competition. Finally, at the end of November 1927, Ford broke their silence in a big way and started a multi-day ad campaign by taking out full-page advertisements in almost every single newspaper in the United States. These print ads were developed by the N.W. Ayer & Son Company out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This ad campaign saw Ford ads printed in nearly 2,000 daily newspapers across the United States at an estimated cost of one and a half million dollars. Unlike future Model A advertisements done by Ford, all of this preliminary work was done in newspapers and no magazine ads were produced at the time. Monday, November 28, 1927, saw the first of these ads appear in print all across the United States. The new Ford, the ads confirmed, was to be announced the coming Friday, December 2nd. This first ad featured a prominent photograph of Henry Ford, but no pictures of the new car appeared. The next day, November 29th, Another full-page ad ran in newspapers around the country with the headline of Important Facts About the New Ford Car. While some of the text did discuss new details of the car, it referred people to wait until Friday when all of the details would be revealed. A small illustration showed a man holding a stopwatch looking at a trail of dust left by a car speeding away. It was accompanied by this caption. The new Ford has unusual speed and power. It will do 55 and 60 miles an hour with ease and has run 65 miles an hour on road tests. November 30th saw an attention-grabbing headline of The new Ford car will sell at a surprisingly low price and text that described in detail some of the highlights of the new car including speed, horsepower, brakes, transmission, and it also named the four colors that the car was going to be available in, which included Niagara Blue, Arabian Sand, Dawn Gray, and Gunmetal Blue. On December 1st, 1927, the day before the premiere of the Model A, the first widely circulated images of the new Ford car began to appear in newspapers, with a headline proclaiming, First Pictures of the New Ford Car. This full-page ad is well known today and contained factory illustrations of the body styles that were part of the original debut of the Model A. They included the two-door sedan, roadster, coupe, sport coupe, and faded. Also pictured was a four-door sedan that would not be part of the premiere of the Model A. That wasn't to be introduced until January of 1928 when a prototype four-door was featured at the Ford Industrial Exhibition and the production four doors didn't reach dealer showrooms until June of 1928. The illustrations omitted front and rear bumpers. This ad came in two different versions, one stating that new details would be available tomorrow for papers that ran the ad on December 1st, and the other version said new details would be available today, and that was for papers that used the ad on December 2nd. Media outlets had been working hard to get the scoop on the new Ford, on December 1st, some newspaper reports started publishing actual factory-produced photographs of the new Ford models, and it seemed every one of them wanted to get a photograph of the new car before their competition did, including views of the interior driver compartment and controls. Finally, 
on December 2, 1927, the replacement to the Model T Ford, the car that would be known as the Model A, was introduced to the world. It was the first test to see if Ford's media campaign of silence, followed by four days' worth of newspaper ads, was enough to get people into Ford showrooms. Other than the new details available today version of the December 1st ad, there were no coordinated national ads published by Ford Motor Company on this day. Instead, many local dealers posted ads tailored to their community. If there was any question as to the effectiveness of the week-long advertising campaign, the proof was in the throngs of people who took time out of their day to flood Ford dealer showrooms just to get a glimpse of the new Ford car. Newspapers gave the new Ford front page space with news articles about the spectacle that was the new Ford arriving in showrooms. As much space seemed to be dedicated to the size of the crowds that filled Ford dealers as there seemed to be talk about the car itself. There is no doubt that Ford's unorthodox promotional campaign for the Model A had worked. The public were eager to see the new Ford and wanted to be there on the day it was born.